हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू आई थिंक यू आर वेल ऑल ऑफ यू आर वेरी वेल एटेंटिव एंड सेफ इन होम वट एवर टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंड शेयर विद यू अनदर पोएम फॉर क्लास टेन द नेम ऑफ द पोएम इज सी फीवर बाय जॉन मेस्फिल्ड इट्स अनदर ब्यूटीफुल पोएम before going to analyze or give and before going to give an interpretation i want to tell all of you be very attentive and careful one by one i shall discuss about the poet his journey his life why did he take an interest to compose the poem theme of the poem substance of the poem analysis of the poem and ultimately the structure and literary essence see fever one thing they want to inform you that this is at present for class 12 sorry class 10 and uh, as far as the syllabus is concerned in previous class 10 syllabus there was an another same thematic poem this is on the thrust by kiral luik out the eco focus is the same first of all about the poet john mesfer actually he was the british novelist dramatist at the very early age of his life whenever he was just 6 years old he lost both his parents it was a very critical and tough time for the poet he was brought up under the care of his aunt in this tough situation he continued his education and he desperately struggle with his life ultimately he continued his study education and whenever he was matured he took an irresistible quest for marine life he took the job as a sailor so as a sailor he had some experience tremendous experience of marine life of sea voyage time and again again and again he sailed all over the world over the sea so uh, what is the life of a sailor he had a first hand experience from this first hand experience he had a quest quest an interest for this marine and voyage the poem consists of 12 lines and these 12 lines are subdivided into three paras each para consists of four lines in total there are 12 lines the poem is line rhymed alternatively in each two line is rhymed sky by seeking breaking tide denied flying crying life knife rover and over you fantastic rhyme scheme whatever now come to that particular poem what is the theme of the poem Here we see the poet's irresistible courage to make journey in the perilous ocean, turbulent ocean, vast ocean. He does not want to sit idly at home, responding and corresponding to the call of nature. He wants to set sail. If you notice, if you watch, if you see, in each and every paragraph, the line is started with the same. focus i must go down to the seas again i must go down to the seas again and i must go down to the seas again literally literally it is called refrain when some lines are repeated in a sentence sorry in a poem this is called a refrain and not only refrain so many so many figures of speech are used by the poet images metaphor alliteration everything i'm coming i'm coming i am going to discuss one by one first of all i want to suggest you about the theme of the poem the poet does not want to sit idly at home the lonely sea the clear sky the white sail the gray dawn wild call running tide seagulls whales everything are calling the poet everything is calling and the poet does not deny the call of this natural 
spectacles and natural phenomena and natural things he wants to surrender himself for the beauty for the vastness for the wilderness of nature now i'm coming to the first para the students should underline basically these particular phrases and reference that is lonely sea tall sea whale's cake white cells seeking and cremist so many adjectives have been used by the poet here actually here we also notice uh, figures of speech this is alliteration anuprasalankar what is alliteration if in a sentence if some in a words a vowel and consonant either in the beginning in middle or end is repeated this structural devices is called alliteration a bengali example ketoki kotoki ohitechi kotha kaminir kane kane an english example from rhyme of ancient merrim alone alone all all alone alone on a wide wide sea have a look in this line alone alone all all alone alone here the very particular vowel a is repeated on a wide wide sea the consonant w is repeated here in the third line you notice whale's kick wind song white sail seeking so w is repeated whales winds white so magical so photographic presentation the poet has said that he must go down to the seas again so a very particular word from again it is clear that it is not for the first time he is going to make a voyage previously he had made a voyage at present he is making a voyage and in future he will also make a voyage now bengal interpretation not interpretation annotation i must go down to the seas again ami abar samudre beriye porbo to the lonely sea nirjon samudre and the sky nirjon akashe why it is lonely actually in the vast ocean in the limitless ocean in the um, you say you can say in the turbulent ocean the poet will be alone for that he is not afraid and he is not scared actually natural phenomenon natural spectacles are with him in the sky the clouds the sun the sails the wind the sea everything this objects will give him the companion and with that companion he will proceed he will seek knowledge he will gather knowledge and confidence you know and all i ask at all sip er jonne proyojon amar ekti dirgho jahaj and a star to steer her by actually the same echo from the poem on the thrust the sun will be my friend and the star will be my guide over over the poet's head from the limitless sky sun will provide sunlight and the sun will be the poet's friend and the star that means the pole star here also the star to steer actually before the invention of uh, compass the mariners indicated their position in the limitless sea by watching the position of the pole star in the sky in what portion of the sea or they they just indicated by the position of the pole star in the sky here also the pole star will steer the poet that means the pole star will indicate the poet its way the wheel skeek what does the poet wants to seek what does the poet wants to enjoy the wheel skeek chakar andolon when the sea will pro- when the sea will proceed the wheels of the sea will kick there will be an connection between the waves and the wheels wind song actually here the figure of speech that is used this is also another fantastic imagery and uh, another fantastic figure of speech used here this is personification actually when human qualities have been attributed to inanimate object 
and is made to just act just like a human being. This is called, we know, personification of wind song. Actually, naturally wind will blow. Wind is blowing. To the poet, it is saying that actually the poet is singing a song. The poet wants to enjoy, wants to listen the blowing of the wind. White cell shaking. Shada pale randolo. Age ki hoto akonto jahaj unnoto onek. Navigation. नेथी सिस्टम में माध्यमे को बोलना तो आगे पाले ते हवा लेके जहाज चलते हैं। वो भी तोड़ कालीन सोमाए लिख चें। ताई बोलचें व्हाइट सेल सेकिंग आंदोलन हवा लेके एमोन आंदोली तो हवे पालता एवं से धूम के जबे सही तो को भी भरा बसें। एंड द ग्रेमिस्ट को भी जबन जार्नी शुरू कर बेन से प्रोफाइटे जनो स not only that, actually, hmm, grey dawn. This is an figure of speech. This is transferred epithet. Grey dawn. Actually, a dawn is not grey, dark, yellow in this way. Actually, hmm, when the poet will make and will the when the poet will start his journey, at the time the grey coloured mist will deposit over the surface of the sea and it will make the entire atmosphere entire soul grey that's why now the bengali meaning clearly ami obosshoi samudra beriye porbo ami abar samudra beriye porbo nirjon samudre nirjon akase ebong tar jonno proyojon amar ekti lomba jahaj ebong ekti poster jeta amar potho prodorshon korbe and the wheels kick ebong chakar andolon बायु प्रवाह हैर शब्दों एवं शादा पाले रंगदलों घनों वाशा समुद्र रेल बुके जोमाय उठ बे एवं एक अधूरा और प्रोखते अमीबेरी के पड़ो। Now come to the second para. In the second para, the poet has also given a photographic presentation in such a way that we feel that our presence is on some seashore, as if we are standing in the seashore. So magical and fantastic is the description and the presentation running tide suppose as if you are watching the running tide suppose you are uh, standing on the seesaw you are just hearing the clear call you just have the essence of the windy day and not only that over your head you are just watching the flying clouds so must be underlined running tide white call clouds flying windy day photographic presentation and also in the fourth line of the second para the poet is here presenting in such a way the presentation that we can feel the saltiness of flung spray and the blown fume now in bengali example not example actually meaning i must go down to the seas again once again the refrain is repeated the line is repeated this is called refrain i mean about samudra video for karun dadullaman एवं प्रभावमान समुद्र के स्रोत आम के डाक चें एवं ये एक तबों नो डाक स्पष्ट डाक जे डाक कोकनों में मानना पड़ा जाएगा ना the poet does not the poet does not want to deny it is not possible for the poet to deny the call of the running tide the call of the wind etc the call is clear and wild and all I ask a windy day the poet prefers for a windy day. When the poet will start his journey, the day must be windy because of what? Because wind is required for the ship. If there is no sufficient wind, the ship will not proceed. So windy day is longed for the poet. And the white clouds flying. The poet wants to enjoy. The poet wants to uh, have an essence of the flying clouds that will roam endlessly in the sky. From this line, one line is reminded in my mind that is from the poem Daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud. What's what? Was walking uh, on a valley. Not valley actually, actually along the margin of bay. And all of a sudden, he stretched his glance towards the sky and he saw that some clouds are floating. The poets imagined himself to the clouds. Act, uh, actually, as the clouds have no aim aimlessly from one person to another one sign to another in the sky aimlessly the uh, clouds are floating similarly the poet is here also floating 
not floating walking this was the echo from the poem therefore it is here also the same echo the poet is as if sta standing or the poet is as if within the sea in the sea and into the sea and from the sea he wants to enjoy he wants to watch the flying clouds and uh, some vibrant imagery is flung spray of blown steam when the sea will proceed the sea will be just hit with the waves of the sea and when the waves of the sea will hit with the sea then these waves will broke into pieces making some white fume white fume what is fume steam means foam and in some occasionally occasional cases occasionally we can spray foam similarly here the foam natural foam is being emerged from the marine life how from the waves when the waves are hit with the ship then it's broken into pieces making some bubbles and making a foam the poet wants to enjoy and whenever this foam will spray on his body he will have some thrilling experience and he will some enjoy the thrill of this marine journey and not only that the poet also wants to enjoy the seagull's cry actually crying means sucking that means the chirping exactly now i'm coming to the final third para here also some vibrant images have been used and some the last line uh, there is uh, some philosophical truth actually you know and also uh, figures of speech that is the metaphor of our life has been suggested now uh, the line is also repeated the same echo that is i must go down to the sea again kobi abar beriye porte cha beriye porben and he wants to enjoy a life like a vagrant that means like a um, vagrant like a vagabond he wants to roam about he wants to migrate from one to another time one place to another place on sea actually like a gypsy life as the gypsy are similarly the poet wants to enjoy the vagabond life and gypsy life who have no fixity on their life who have no fixity of their life each and every time they make journey quite hard they like similarly like the vagabond like the gypsies the poet wants to enjoy the vagrant gypsy life through the voyage to the girls way and whenever he makes voyage he wants to enjoy he wants to imitate it he wants to follow the way of sea girls from that another echo that is in my mind that is uh, to a spider the poet wants to wants a life like a skylark pb sally to a skylark another fantastic poem romantic poet pb sally uh, another fantastic poet in that particular poem the poet seeking confidence saying that teach me how thy gladness the skylark is devoid from all weariness all tension all weary on conflict sorrow sufferings nothing it is devoid from all these things similarly the poet wants to enjoy the life of a seagull's life he wants to fly in the sky limitless sky and he wants to uh, lost wants to be lost in the marine life he wants to uh, just take a life where he will be totally lost like a life of a whale tini macher moto jibon tini pochondo koren hoy the wings like a weighted life another fantastic imagery weighted knife but it means certain whenever um, if we are caught with some heat with some sharp knife then we have some feelings what is the feelings scarting feelings similarly uh, the poet will on the way of his journey when the chill and cold wind will blow and it will just touch on his skin it will have some piercing essence like the cutting essence of knife and all i got the merry year and in the last two lines psychological truth that is through disparate journey bold journey the poet will cross the barrier of his life now he will come to the fag end of his life when and i got the merry year kobi ekta tar sahokari naviker kach theke thelo rohorer kach theke se ekta tar experience gather korte chaichen 
আনন্দের গল্প সে শুনতে চাইছে মেরি ইয়ার অ্যানাদার ইমেজ ফ্রম এ লাফিং ফেলো রোভার ফেলো রোভার মিনস হোকারি নাবিকের কাছ থেকে সেলেবের কাছ থেকে তার জীবনের ঘটনা শুনতে চাইছেন শুনতে শুনতে জীবন প্রায় ছায়ান্নে এসে যাবে জীবন প্রায় বার্ধক্যের দিকে পৌঁছে যাবে যখন ও ভেরি ভেরি ফিলোজফিক্যাল ভেরি ভেরি মিনিংফুল অ্যান্ড ভেরি মেটাফরিক্যাল লাইন অ্যান্ড ভেরি 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 বিউটিফুল লাইন হোয়াইট স্লিপ হোয়াইট স্লিপ মিনস দ্য পোয়েট ইজ সিকিং ফর এ পিসফুল ডেথ অফ ইজ লাইফ পিসফুল ডেথ আসতে আসতে শান্তির মৃত্যু ঘনি আসবে অ্যান্ড এ সুইট ড্রিম হোয়াট হ্যাপেন্স অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইফ উই স্লিপ থ্রু স্লিপ উইথ জাস্ট ট্রান্সফোর্ট টু অ্যান আইডিয়াল ওয়ার্ল্ড দিস ইজ কল ড্রিম হেয়ার দ্য পোয়েট অলসো লংস ফর এ সুইট quiet sleep that means he will correspond to the life of tranquility that means through peaceful death and a sweet dream after death he has some essence he has some confidence for the death after life post death period life this is sweet dream when the long tricks over tricks means journey here actually literally it is meaning its meaning is journey but actually its meaning is when our when the poet's life comes to an end actually through the whole poem we can see the poet has used that the poet has used the poet wants to suggest here the sea as the metaphor of life with the sea representing the modest and humble way of his life sutoran amrai kobita dekhlen je kobi alos bhabe barite boshe thakbe na tini beriye porben ebong tini রূপ রসগন্ধ এনজয় করবেন এবং সামুদ্রিক ভ্রমণের মধ্য দিয়ে তিনি অকুত ভয় হয়ে তিনি জীবনের পর মানে তোয়াক্কা না করে পর না করে তিনি বেরিয়ে পড়ছেন এবং বেরিয়ে পড়বেন একই ইকো আমরা পেয়েছিলাম গ্রেলুই গাউদের পোয়েমে কামাই বে বাট গো আই মাস্ট ফিরে আমি আসবো কিন্তু বেরিয়ে আবার যাবো সেম ইকো আই মাস্ট গো ধাম টু দ্য সিজ এগেন এবং এই সমুদ্রযাত্রার মধ্য দিয়েই তিনি তার ম্যাক্সিমাম লাইফটা স্পেন্ড করবেন এবং স্পেন্ড করার মাধ্যমে আসতে পর আস্তে আস্তে তিনি একটা একটা যে মহাজাগতিক শক্তি সেটা হলো মৃত্যু তার জীবনে গ্রাস করবে মৃত্যু ঘনি আসবে এবং মৃত্যু পরবর্তী জীবনেও তিনি এই এসেন্স যেন ফিল করবেন এই ইকোমরা পাচ্ছি দিস ইজ দ্য পোয়েম লেটার ইন অ্যান্ড অ্যানাদার ভিডিও আই সেল গিভ সাম কোয়েশ্চেন্স সো টুডে দ্যাটস অল অ্যান্ড নাও জাস্ট গেট ইউর পেন এক্সারসাইজ বুক অ্যান্ড বুকস আর রেডি and try to guess what is suggested by me in this video and if you go through this video i think it will be very helpful for all of you thank you wait for the next video and be very happy be very careful and be very safe and just stay in home and have abide by the suggestion and rules of your parents thank you bye bye